If you have the skills and dedication, you can do all kinds of hard things. You can pursue challenging careers in tech, law, healthcare, and you will have the ability to do the job well. But just because we can do something hard, does that mean that we should do it? Do hard things. It's a celebrated concept. Best-selling books, massively popular podcasts, and as many do hard things memes as you could want. And yes, good has come from this. We've learned how to build our resilience, how to see the challenges in front of us, how to know the courage we have. But I think do hard things can also lead us astray. Because those three words on their own leave out a very important question. Which hard things are we meant to do? So many of us have not been taught how to solve for that. So we oversimplify, do hard things, and pursue whatever difficult challenges are in front of us. And there are consequences to our unfocused pursuit of any hard thing. We pursue unfulfilling careers, we reduce our potential impact, and ultimately, it can lead to career distress and burnout. So tonight, I want to offer you a different way, where you do your hard thing, not just any hard thing. You might be thinking, what does it mean, my hard thing? Well, there's two key building blocks. The first, uncovering our most natural traits and skills, the abilities that we have an affinity for, our gifts. And then, we need to direct those gifts towards the goals that are most meaningful for us, what many think of as our purpose. You might be thinking, living my purpose, wow, that's for the lucky few, that's not going to be for me. But I'm here to show you that it is attainable. And the workplace studies tell us that those that bring their innate gifts and their passions into their careers, more engaged, more productive, more fulfilled. This isn't a dream. This is how we maximize our careers, away from doing any hard thing, and so that we start doing our hard thing. So how are we going to know our hard thing when it hits us? Well, we need to get in tune with the abilities that are intuitive for us. What do you do that doesn't require carrots and sticks? What skills bring you positive energy just to use them? And then we need to tune in to when we're inspired to use those gifts. For me, the first time I noticed this, I was 12 years old playing an important tennis match. My opponent that day, he was better than me. We both knew that. But for some reason, I was winning. And he was getting upset. Near the end of the match, he collapsed on the court. He wouldn't get up. He refused to play. After the confusion died down, I ran over to him. And I found him sobbing, destroyed that he was about to lose. I was honest. I said to him, you're better than me. And if you get up and play the way that we both know that you can, you'll win. He looked at me, didn't really say anything. But he wiped his tears. He got up and he said, OK, we'll keep playing. So I ran back to my side of the court, and guess what happened? He started crushing winners. He came all the way back to beat me in this big match that I could have won. So I'm walking off the court, and I know that my club is going to be disappointed, but secretly, I feel good. Because that was the moment that I discovered my natural ability to see the greatness in others, and how much it means to me to help them unleash their talents to pursue their goals. That was the day that I discovered that coaching others to unleash their greatness, that's my hard thing. This is one of the biggest memories from my youth. And so you might think that this talk is going to be about how that day launched me to become one of the youngest professional sports coaches in history. But that's not this story. Because coaching others to beat us, that's not part of a competitive sports playbook. So that day, and for many years afterward, I came to believe that what I had done was wrong. I should have let him melt down and then beat him. Been more competitive, take the win. So that's what I did in school, sports, in my career. Doing and achieving the hard things. But I don't believe that I was ever fulfilled by my achievements, and I don't think I maximized my talent in those environments either. 
because I was doing hard things that weren't my hard thing. I pursued a career in law, starting out in a national law firm and eventually becoming general counsel of an international technology company. But despite my professional achievements, I never forgot that day on that court when I discovered my natural ability to see others' greatness, and how much it means to me to help them fulfill their dreams. So I knew, after 15 years of building my legal career, I had to walk away and build a new phase of my career based on the foundation of my hard thing. So that's what I did. I launched my own coaching and consulting business to help others unleash their greatness. But I want you to know that when we do this, it's not just for the individuals that are helping teach the greatness, it's for everyone that receives it. And so when I was making this big career transition, I started to wonder, how did we get into this place? Into the belief that if we do and achieve the hard things, everything will be good. Because we are pursuing the demanding degrees and we are achieving in the challenging careers. Yet so many of us are left feeling career distress and confusion. Why is that? Let's look back to how we choose our careers in the first place. For many, the studies show that our parents play an influential role in our career selection. Makes sense. I'm the parent of a young one. I deeply understand the feeling of trying to create a safe future for our kids. But the studies also show us that over-enthusiastic parental control over our child's career choice has negative impacts. A 2021 study showed that 50% of students felt their parents strongly influenced their career selection. The two main reasons why those students felt their parents pushed them down those paths, good money and jobs that would bring their parents pride. Half these kids aren't choosing their professional careers based on their natural gifts or the goals that mean a lot to them. Think about that. Think about the last time you were trying to pursue something very difficult and it had nothing to do with your natural abilities or a goal that meant a lot to you. How did you feel? I'm sure you worked hard enough and you were able to achieve it, but I bet you didn't feel that connected to it. I bet you didn't feel that passionately about it. And those kids, in the survey that realized this and wanted to pivot to another career, well, after they told their parents, 60% of the parents said they felt disappointment in their child's new career choice. And we don't need that study to tell us that. We know how sensitive that conversation could be. So many of us never have it. We soldier on doing and achieving the hard things because we've been told or come to believe that these are the right things, the good things. Meanwhile, feeling confusion and pain about who we are. But there's good news. There's a way back to doing our hard thing, and I want to start tonight. I want you to think back to one of those incredible moments when a friend or a coworker said something like, wow, you're unbelievable at resolving conflict. How do you do that? Or you're amazing at coming up with ideas on the spot. I wish I was more like that. Felt amazing, right? We hold it for a moment and then we let it slip away. Why is that? Why do we undervalue our most natural gifts that serve our goals? They're instinctive to us. We think about them a lot. We read books about them. We listen to podcasts about them. So maybe we come to think, these are no big deal. They're probably easy for everyone. And in a world where we're being taught to do hard things, these things can't be valuable because they're easier for us. So we tuck them to the side. We don't see them as the keys to unlocking our greatest impact. And instead, we pursue things that are hard for us. Maybe that's why so many say their careers feel like hard work. And this is why I'm so passionate about helping others discover their hard thing. Because I know our communities and organizations are missing out because we're not unleashing our greatest impact. And we're missing out because we're not getting the fulfillment of pursuing our deepest goals. The studies are already telling us this. A global study last year showed that one in three are feeling distress symptoms and one in four are feeling burnout symptoms related to their careers. Three of the main reasons, 
unsustainable workload, lack of personal growth, low connection to their workplace. We see this in so many high achievers we know. They're doing and achieving the hard things while at the same time telling us about their exhaustion and distress in their career, wondering if they pursued the wrong path. Doing the wrong hard things is wearing us down. So let's get to the good stuff. How do we get more of our hard thing in our career now? Well, the first way is through positive job crafting. This is where we adjust some of our day-to-day -day activities to better align with our natural abilities and our passions. For example, if you're an amazing speaker, then perhaps you give your team updates verbally instead of only sending a long written document. Or if you deeply value workplace relationships, you find a way to get involved in more mentorship and leadership programs in your company. The studies on job crafting show us that those who bring it into their career, they're more engaged, they're more fulfilled, and they achieve more. It's not just for the individual, the entire organization benefits. When I first discovered my natural ability to see others' greatness and, and help them use their gifts to fulfill their goals, I started job crafting. As a lawyer, I began spending more of my time training junior lawyers, doing information sessions, finding technology to elevate the quality and efficiency of our work. Job crafting made me more impactful and feel more fulfilled. But I also appreciate that this may not be an option for everyone. Some of us may have jobs or managers where job crafting is just not gonna be possible. Or for those of us that get to do it, the adjustments may not feel like they're enough. So if it gets to that point where you have enough clarity and confidence in your abilities and the goals that mean the most to you, then you may need to give yourself permission. Permission to trust your instincts, your gifts and your purpose so that you can bring as much of your hard thing into your life as you can. And don't worry, you don't have to go from zero to a hundred overnight, it's a journey. For me, I started with supporting organizations that help underserved kids build life skills. I started doing presentations to my community on topics like this that mean a lot to me. I began sharing my ideas on social media about how we can unlock our greatness. And what I found is that when we start pushing into our hard thing, our communities and organizations, they feel our passion, they sense our commitment, and new opportunities continue to present themselves. Perfect example, me standing here tonight. This would not have happened if I had not pursued my hard thing. And I want you to know, this isn't for the select few. This is available in some form to anyone that is willing to put in the self-reflection. So if you decide that you're gonna do this, that you're gonna go down the journey to discover your hard thing, and if it means as much to you as you believe that it does know this, my experience tells me that the pendulum will begin to swing from wondering if we'll ever be able to do our hard thing to feeling like there's no other choice. We must do our hard thing. And you'll take the leap in the way that reveals itself, building the path one day at a time, enjoying the effort. And yes, it will be hard, but it'll be your hard thing. So tonight, when we get home, instead of immediately doom scrolling our phones, what if we asked ourselves this? What do I think about when I'm not trying to think? What comes naturally to you? And when those ideas start coming, keep digging. Keep asking yourself, why do I care about that? Your purpose is under there. And if you attach your natural gifts to your purpose, you'll have discovered your hard thing. What would our careers, our communities, and organizations be like if we did this? We know from the studies, We'd be more engaged, more productive, more fulfilled. This exercise might take you one minute a day to discover the hard things that you were meant to do. I can't imagine a more impactful use of that time. Can you? Thank you.